and the way that the team played, I'm just kind of happy to kind of get away from these games with health. I'm happy for these guys to walk away from these ones um, with getting closer and closer to milestones and still seeing guys stick up for each other and seeing some of that stuff. Obviously, you don't want to see the team drop off uh, in terms of their level of play or have bad habits creep in. That's definitely not something you want to do. But regardless, I don't. I don't mind this. I don't mind this. Um, I don't know. I don't mind this this game here from from this team tonight. I'm not really upset about everything that went on there, and uh, yeah, I, I I don't know. If you guys want to call in and talk about everything that went on in, during the game here tonight, send me a message so that we can talk about it. Send me a message so we can break down everything that went on. I'm happy to hear from you guys. I'm happy to hear everything that's going on uh, and your feelings as we get closer and closer to the playoffs. I'll be honest. I I mean, obviously, I'm watching all the games, trying to break them down let's just call it what it is i really don't give a shit about this game like i just don't care uh samsonov was not good tonight he just wasn't really good um i could sit here and harp on a million things but i i don't really know what to say it's game 79 all i care about right now is people being healthy i care about the goalie not getting hurt and i care about austin matthews getting to 70 outside of that i really just don't give a shit about these games Game 79, 80, 81, 82. We're not going to learn anything from these games that are going to tell us about what's going to go on in the playoffs. It really is so far relevant to me. Like, getting texts during the games, being like, oh, this is the same shit that we see all year. This is the same team, whatever. I don't get it, man. Like, I, I just don't, I just don't care. I, I, I don't take anything from this game the only thing that i can like derek there saying i'd be seriously worried how can you not be i i don't so i don't see why like we saw this sample built up over the last month plus of of this team that is like hey this is more who we feel like they're gonna be this is what's gonna happen come playoff time this is what's going to happen once we get there i mean why t why all of a sudden tonight when this game happens are we just gonna start freaking out about like hey this team fucking sucks we can't do it like people in the chat here are going nuts and i would be in the same boat as you guys if this was the case if if this was the case um a month ago i would be the case i would be the same if this was the case two months ago and this had been a constant theme over the last little while but like why are we looking at these games where it's like all we care about is getting to the playoffs healthy and getting austin matthews to 70 like yeah there's some worries here there's some worries for sure but are we gonna are we gonna really like sit here and blow this out of the water and go absolutely nuts over everything that's going on like we're gonna lose our minds when it comes to uh, to the fact that they lost this game to the Devils tonight, like I just, I just don't see that being the case for myself. If you want to call in and you feel differently, I'm happy to hear it. Like, send a message to me on Twitter, send a message to me on Instagram, send a message on Discord. I want to hear from people because clearly this is one for me where I'm feeling very. I just feel. I just don't care. Like. These are the ones where it was like, this is the most fun that I've had watching a Leafs team over the past basically three, four months because. We're seeing we're seeing different line combinations. We're seeing uh, we're seeing these guys move around to play with each other in different spots, and we're seeing Sheldon Keefe have some type of creativity. And then all of a sudden, when Marner comes back, he's not switching it up and blowing the whole thing up like we have like we've seen it before. I I just don't care. Like every single time. We get to the every single year. It's like the whole season doesn't matter. The whole season doesn't matter because all that's going to matter in the is the playoffs. And some of these games are fun, and I'm still seeing a lot of the stuff that we've saw that is gets us fired up. I'm seeing the stuff that I saw that gets me fired up, like Domi jumping in there after the guy Simone Benoit blowing people up. I have some concerns about Joel Edmondson taking another shot to the foot there where he was out before because of uh, the blocking a shot. Some of those things for sure are concerning, but I don't. I I just it's like yeah, it's a messy game, but are we gonna are we gonna make a mountain out of a molehill here like this doesn't this doesn't really bother me that much and everything that went on uh i just i i, I don't know i don't know 
I, I'm going to keep reading the chat because I want to see what you guys have to say uh, say about this and see where we're at. I'll, I'll try to just answer questions here tonight, I guess, is the best way. I have some things that I thought and some things that I was watching, so we'll get to some of those, but uh, I'll see where you guys are at as well. I see that uh, we have a video there from Rosie that went out talking about Austin Matthews uh, or Max Domi st sticking up for Austin Matthews. So at some point here during the show, we will I will run that for you guys and we can see, watch that. Uh, I think that that would be, uh, well, that'll be cool for us to break down. But I do see um, I do see a question in the chat here or a super chat here. So I want to make sure that I get to, I get to all of these. Let's hit the super chats. Super chat from uh, earlier on, well, I guess while the game was going on there. Max Domi, I appreciate Max Domi. Uh, the super chat from Rob Robert Smith. M Robert says, Max Domi, all caps. Look, you want to talk about a bright spot of tonight's game and not going crazy and not being so pissed off? Um, I'll touch on this for you. Him... The points that he's getting, the plays that he's making, and him being with Austin Matthews is incredible. I love what I'm seeing there. I love what I'm seeing there. Uh, I love that he's jumping in. I love that he's going after the guy who's going after Matthews. I appreciate the super chat. Thank you, Robert. Before I get to the next one, there's a comment in the chat. It distracted me here while I was going through this. I'm gonna answer. I'm gonna talk about this right now. TML says you should be upset. Goodbye, home ice. Who the fuck cares about home ice? Seriously, who the fuck cares about home ice? This team had an opportunity to play against the Columbus Blue Jackets. They played against the Montreal Canadiens. They played at home. They played on the road. They played against Florida. They played against Tampa. They played against Boston. They played against Washington. Who the fuck cares? It doesn't matter if you just don't show up. No one cares about home ice advantage because every year it's been just piss it away, piss it away, piss it away. What does it matter talking about home ice here? Like, this is what I don't understand. If you're a Stanley Cup contending team, you're you're going to win your games. If you're a Stanley Cup contending team, like everyone seems to believe you are, this team is different. This team, you, you think this team is, this team is a, a team that has character, has attitude, has mindset. If you truly believe that, then what does it matter? TML saying last change. Sheldon Keefe is a goddamn moron when it comes to last change. Who cares? Like, it's honestly better to take it out of his hands because then he can't overthink it and put the fourth line out against Steven Stamkos and Braden Point. Who cares? Like, who cares? I, I just don't get some of that stuff where it's like we're blowing these things out of proportion. The LA Kings, eight seed, go on and win the Stanley Cup. St. Louis Blues, get into the playoffs. You're not having home ice there. You go on and you win the Stanley Cup. You won game seven on the road against the Boston Bruins in Boston. Who cares? Who cares? Truly, who cares? If you are going to be the best team in the NHL, prove you're the best team in the NHL. Like, just prove it. That's what I don't care. That's what I'm talking about. It's like, this is stuff I just don't give a shit about at this point. We watch the team year after year after year after year where it's like, oh, this is the best team. We got home ice. And then it's like, oh, we're talking about the suits and how it's all quiet in there. And the tickets are $10,000. And uh, well, if that's the case, then fuck home ice. Like then at that point, maybe it's just better to not have home ice. Right? Like I just, that's what it is. Like, I don't get why we're going to freak out about all of that. I, I don't get why that's going to be such a huge deal for us now. Like why? Why is that going to be an issue? Doesn't make sense. Sheldon Keefe stinks at line matching anyways, in my opinion. So having last change, I don't really see it making much of a difference anyways. <laughs> yeah, the ticket sales at MLSC, man, those guys, they're just jacking prices up, making it impossible for the common man. And yeah, get, get, drink, Drink prices down and everything. Let people in there. Who cares? Like, guess what? I'm like, I just don't get it because we talk. I we have all the people in the in the chat and are reading it, and it's like, well, you get home ice. You, you let's let's play this team. Let's play that team. You're pissing away opportunities to play so and so. Like, who cares? This team has never ever gone into a position that we've been like this is favorable and made it worthwhile. Just go win. Go win. 
Are you the best team in the NHL? Are you the team that's going to win the Stanley Cup? Get it done. That's that's the, another rant I have about home ice and losing these points here now. Um, I don't know. That's That's my thoughts on that. There are some other things I do want to get to, and we do have another super chat here, so let's get to that. Max, looks like Chad is melting down. Just one game. Relax. Now, I agree with Max here. Like, I don't think it's... I think there's some stuff that's caused for... That is a little bit concern, uh, concerning. Excuse me. I think the way Ilya Samsonov played tonight was a little bit concerning. You just... It's not so much about this game tonight, and it's more about what's going to happen in the next game. What's going to happen the next time he gets a start? Is he going to fold? Who's Sheldon Keefe going to go to? How's he going to want to deploy these guys? Is he going to be worried about Samsonov? Is he going to get wrapped in bubble wrap? Like, what's the next step here, and how does Samsonov respond? This sucked. This game stunk. Like, this was a bad game for Ilya Samsonov. Six goals against on, like, 20-something shots. We absolutely get the bet completely and utterly pooched there. Like, that was just all-time brutal bet by me let's just call it what it is that was trash but like we got people in the chat here mike we're turning on samsonov already samsonov is trash samsonov came back from the marlies in like mid-january or whatever and he comes back and we're talking about this guy being one of the best goaltenders in the nhl since he's come back like this guy that's the first game that he's let five or more goals since he was down with the marlies what are we like yes this game was bad but i don't care about that as much as i care about what happens with the next one how does the next one go that's what my concern is that's what i want to see from them that's how i want to see the response then if it goes bad yeah then concerning because this was the start of it and then from that point on we're just trying to figure things out and trying to battle back This, the Samson off night tonight was really not good. There was a couple that was obviously the one in front by Giordano. Look, there's a, there's some other things here. Giordano, love you, man. Can't be in the lineup. Not good. Not good enough. Um, he's got to go. He can't be in here. TJ Brody, um, love you. You did good stuff when you first got to the team. You got to go down in in minutes you got to go down in matchups you can't be playing those because you're just going to get exposed like what happened here tonight um he did not i don't think he played well i i think he's kind of out to lunch look at whatever goal it was but it was very early on it was the one 20 second 21 seconds after the leafs opened the scoring 18 seconds into the game mind you which also you want to talk about another thing here why the fuck after 18 seconds into the game you score a goal are you putting Sheld uh, sheldon keith deciding let's change the lines now like why if you played 18 seconds you got to change the lines who the hell cares why leave them out there change the lines puck goes down into brody's corner Fumble the puck behind the net, go over, lose a battle, go to the front of the net, lose a battle, pass the puck right to Eric Holla's stick, wide open in the slot. Eric Holla just buries into the empty net. It's like, this is just, uh, that, he, he's, he's done this all year. He had a good stretch when, when our guy Morgan Riley was away suspended, turning the season around after his cross check to Ridley Gregg. And then outside of that, it's just, He's just not been that player since. Like, there's that TJ Brody for 10 games, even because it lasted a little bit after Morgan Riley returned as well. That player has not come back. Brody, Giordano, not good nights from them. Samsonov, not a good night there. Uh, other things being pointed out in the chat would be special teams. I see people talking about special teams, special plays, special players. And they just have not really been that over the last little while. I think the penalty kill has been really good. But um, basically, since Marner's return, the penalty kill has started to drop a little bit. And all you guys in the chat were just kind of... I mean, I'm just... I'm not talking about even how they've looked. I'm talking about just even straight up, like, what we're seeing from numbers-wise. And the amount of goals he's been on against, uh, on for against, like, New Jersey, 3 for 4 tonight. 
Leafs power play, 0 for 3. You lost 6-5. You stop one more penalty kill goal or you score one more power play goal and maybe things look a little bit different, right? And I did agree with with Rosie for the most part where he was talking about, hey, don't really worry about the power play because... <laughs> like, don't worry about the power play because it'll get going. It'll get itself back into rhythm. Marner was out, obviously. I I kind of took it and I said, okay, Rosie, that's fine. I agree with you. I'm I'm willing to hear it out. I I'm I'm all on board with this. And then I'm looking and it's like, it feels like it's not gone back. We're not back on track. Every year going into the playoffs, the power play has kind of gone into gone off the deep end. And then it doesn't come back in the power play. And it's not gonna win you Stanley Cups. I don't think the power play will. But being complete garbage is going to lead you into a direction where you actually just might it might lose you one it might lose you an opportunity because if you can't take advantage of your man up opportunities then that's going to stink if you can't stop the other team you know at a reasonable rate on your penalty kill then that's going to kill you you cannot have that some of that stuff yeah our men. Marner is not doing anything in PP and PK. Special team can determine Stanley of no, or no Stanley, Zach. Again, I think that it's not as much about it can win you the Stanley Cup, but I would agree with the fact that it can absolutely sewer you. Keep hitting the like button once we get to 50 here. We'll do the smelling salts. If anybody wants to call into the show, send me a message. I'm happy to hear people uh, hear people out, take some calls here tonight, and uh, get your thoughts on the game. Uh, I, I saw a message there that said that the YouTube stream uh, started late or something. I apologize. I have no idea how that happened because it said it was started on time on my end. I... I can only do so much. I don't think it's going on. It went on Facebook here either. So uh, it should be on radio. It'll be up on podcasts after the fact as well. Uh, hopefully we can get that figured out. But um, yeah, let's, let's get this, this figured out. No. We all got to dial in ahead of the playoffs here. We all got to dial in. All right, let's keep reading the chat. Let's just see what you guys are up to here. And, and I'll keep reading everything that's going on in, in the chat and your thoughts, uh, unless anybody wants to call in. If you do, send me a message. Patrick G. Mafia, Sammy Saturday, then sit him. If he's if he's bad, go with the hot hand. I would agree. I'd probably go back to Samson off on Saturday. I want to see what he's made of. I want to see what happens if you're going to put him into a spot where you're just jumping in. Uh, if you're just jumping in right back into it, what happens in the playoffs if you have one bad game? You have one bad game. You have one bad game in the playoffs. Are you going to be able to bounce back? Are you going to be able to get things done in the next one, or are you going to go? Uh, are you going to go mental midget and you're just not going to be able to? You're you're not going to be able to res get things done. Like you're not going to be able to put up a performance in the next one because that's game like what is going to happen what is going to happen i would agree with that though uh as far as as far as it goes where i saw the the comment in the chat there about um you sit them and you go with the hot hand it's not like Joseph Wall has been that great over the last little while. So. You could be in a conundrum here. Max Domi conundrum, like what happened at the beginning of the season. Take a look at the some of the game logs from tonight's game as well. Um I mean, Samsonov's 700 save percentage is a nightmare. Let's call it what it is. Labushkin, plus two. Morgan Riley, plus three. You lost 6-5, and Morgan Riley was a plus three. 
Labushkin was a plus two. I, I mean, okay. What the hell? Uh, even just taking a look at the rest of this, like... There was not a single Leafs forward who was a minus tonight, according to ESPN. Not one single forward was a minus tonight. How does that even happen? How does that even happen? Not one forward was a minus. Impressive. You lost 6-5 and not one was a minus. Uh, this team... This team... If you guys haven't already, make sure to check out here on the uh, Leafs Nation after, uh, after you finish the After Dark show. Make sure you check out... The video Rosie put out here tonight. Uh, apparently, I can, I'm not going to be able to play it because the audio is not going to work here on the stream. So that's that's where we're at on that one. Uh, keep hitting it. Let's keep hitting the like button. This is a. This is a. What a show we got going on right now. Luke Davidson, Zach. Let's call it what it is. Everybody but the goalie was enough to win. I mean, I don't think Giordano was good. I don't think Giordano was good here tonight. So, I would say probably not. Um, yeah, no. This game was just, I just want to get it over with, burn it, and move on. I don't understand. I truly don't. This is why I want someone to call in. I just don't get why someone, why people in the chat are, like, losing their minds the way they are right now. Like, you would think the world is imploding and that the team didn't just win back-to-back -back games and that, like, this was a 10 nothing fucking loss here tonight. It's like, I can't even understand what is going on reading the chat. Normally, I come on game uh, the post-game show, and I'm pissed off about stuff. I'm losing my mind about stuff, and I'm being like... And, and people are like, oh, doomsday, doomsday, six and a third, or doomsday, 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 whoop de doo fucking doomsday. Yeah, because we're being realistic about things that are going on with the team. And here tonight, it's like, it's game 79. We just want to be... We just want to get through... We just want to get to the playoffs and start this and just not have to deal with this anymore. This regular season that's just continued to that's just continuing to push on and on and on. And we're like exploding over it. Brody wasn't good. Giordano wasn't good. Nylander felt like he floated a little bit out there tonight. I'm not really like I'm not a Marner fan, so this game here tonight just doesn't do it for me. I liked what he did on the Tavares, on the Tavares goal. It's great, obviously. gets into the uh, gets into the neutral zone, causes the turnover, makes a nice drop pass to JT. He scores 18 seconds into the game. Obviously, we love that. But like outside of that, I'm just, I'm just soft plays, no look back hands, turn the puck over. Like I don't, I just. That's where we're at with that. I don't get it. Jeff Curry, Domi will get pushed off the puck by Florida. Jeff, wrong. Wrong. He won't. I don't know if you're just a troll or what, or what, but I don't see how Domi is just going to magically get pushed off the puck in the playoffs. You watch the guy play. If you have any idea what you're watching, what's going on, on on the ice, if you actually had a clue of how the game was played, you have a clue about how some of these guys respond, then maybe you probably wouldn't be coming to the chat after and saying, Max Domi is going to get pushed off the puck in the playoffs. What are we talking about? 
The guy goes in the corners, wins battles, gets physical, beats the absolute piss out of guys, and yet we're coming to the chat after talking about Max Domi is going to get pushed off the puck. You have any idea what's going on out on the ice? Are you watching the game? Are you aware of what's going on? That's not going to happen. He's a playoff guy. He was incredible in Dallas for the playoffs last year. Get that, get that garbage out of here. Like, I thought we can't be doing this. We can't be having those types of conversations talking about Max Domi is going to get pushed off the puck in the playoffs. What are you saying? That doesn't even make sense. You, this guy is one of the only guys that I'm watching consistently, including like Bertuzzi, uh, including Bertuzzi, McMahon, whatever, that were like, yeah, that's a playoff guy. That's a guy who's not going to get pushed off the puck like a guy like Mitch Marner. What are we talking about? We're just trolling here in the chat at this point. That's what it's come to. Game 79, no one gives a shit if the team wins or loses, so we just come to the chat to troll? That's what we're here for? Come on. Come on. Get it together. All right, well, that's... This stream is just off the rails at this point. Uh, let's try to get it back together. Maybe not, based on who the next guest is here. Uh, we'll, we'll be talking through everything going on uh, that went on here tonight with this Leafs team, everything uh, that's going on. Let's hear from a friend of mine, a friend of the show. You've seen him in the chat. You see him in the chat there a bunch. Uh, let's hit the animation and as I bring in uh, our next guest. We're going to have to go right to ludicrous speed. <gasps> Prepare ship for ludicrous speed. All right. Let's welcome to the show for the first time ever. You see him in the chat there all the time. The man, the myth, the legend, G Mac. G Mac, how's it going tonight? Hey Zach, it's going pretty well over here. How are you? Hanging in there? <laughs> yeah, I I think I'm. I think I don't care as much about what happened tonight as it seems like the chat does. Like they're we're losing our minds right now. Look, buddy. Uh, I'm not going to pretend like I have a lot of uh, a lot of insights to give you a lot of things to add to this. I'm just I'm just here to tell you I don't think you're crazy. I don't think anybody should be really giving a shit about this. I mean, let's all take a step back here. If you told us before you're going into what game 78, game 79, you got your playoff matchup locked in. Basically, we all know it's going to be Florida. You got Austin Matthews two goals. You got Domi stepping up. You got you got him beating the piss out of somebody for even breathing on Austin Matthews. Yeah. What, what are what are we complaining about here? Like like I guarantee I I'm I'm sure the players are in that room. They know that they don't need the points anymore. Yeah. They're they're concerned about getting Matthews the goals. And and look, I understand that people are worried. But I, I, I just, I just want to come from a point of saying, I don't think that this is something that you can really, you can really take too much out of here. I think whether they win this game, they lose this game, I don't think that changes much in the outlook inside this room. Yeah, that's what I'm like. I, I think that ultimately the way I'm, t my takeaway from this game is we got out healthy. Samsonov had a tough game. Let's be let's call it what it is. He was not good here tonight. You walk away from a game with a 700 save percentage. I don't think anyone's ever going to say, "Hey, you played all right in there, brother." Like it just it just doesn't happen. That's not going to that's not going to be the case. Um, you know, sometimes you just need one more save and tonight was one of those nights, but you you got away healthy. You got a couple of goals. Domi beat the absolute piss out of that guy. I mean, for me, I'm just like, I just want to see them get to the playoffs. I still think that a lot of the stuff that we saw go on tonight still indicated a lot of the things I've seen over the last month or two months, I guess, now to this point that it made me feel like a little bit more belief or like the idea that this team actually could do something that the other teams couldn't, where you just have that kind of character, that drive, that attitude, the I'm not going to walk away from this one kind of uh tussle in front of the net situations and you're just gonna push back we i feel like i still saw that tonight but then i'm just like yeah goals that were contributed to Power, penalty kill excuse me wasn't great here tonight i like you can't look at one game and be like well three for four or new jersey goes three for four on the penalty kill mitch marner was back for this one the penalty kill sucks because of mitch marner 
the penalty kill was really good for years because Mitch Marner was on it. So I don't know. I just don't have too many crazy takeaways about tonight's game, but um, <laughs> let's go to a more positive. You think Matthews gets 70? Oh, I mean, it, it, it's pretty much without a doubt at this point. Like the, the guy's been automatic because he scored. Is it how many games in a row is it now? He got two tonight. Um, I mean, it, it, the crazy part is that yeah. it doesn't even look like he's. It doesn't even look like he's really trying that hard out there. He he's so good that he's what is it? Sixty eight goals now. He makes it look easy. Like yeah. I, I just don't see a world where you've got all of his teammates pulling for him. Everybody in the building knows that they want to get Austin Matthews the puck. And uh, I think at this point, that's that's on everybody's minds more than winning the game. Whether that's right or that's wrong. I mean that's what we're all arguing about in the chat right now, um, <laughs> yeah. but I, uh, but on the other hand, uh, the other thing too, you look at the decor that was in tonight. I don't think that's your decor in the playoffs. I no. think that's I think that's a big part of what what happened today. They broke down. They but but when you look at it, that's not the same. That's not the same six guys that you're probably going to see out there a lot together in the postseason. And I think that's that's maybe something they're falling back on as well. If I was Sheldon Keefe. I wouldn't be saying that out loud to the guys, but that's why I'd be thinking of once I get back into my little coach's room at, at Scotiabank Arena, I'd be thinking, well, I'm not going to be playing those six guys. Yeah. Yeah. No, and like McCabe out here tonight, he's not playing. I would assume that this is just a rest. Like you're just taking the guy out, preserve him, give him an opportunity to rest up, play the back to back, get him back in the game on Saturday night. That's a guy who's hopping back into your top four. Like, let's not pretend that he's not an important piece here. He's hopping into your top four. And, oh, by the way, you know where else he's going? He's slotting into a spot on the penalty kill. Like, it changes dynamics of some of these things and just kind of tightens stuff up. I think a lot of people are assuming Callie Yarncrook will at least come back at some point here in the first round. So between them, that's that's my... I'm I'm just not too worried. I think we get we'll get more and more to the point of a playoff roster. Um, once we're gonna like kind of get into those final games, we'll probably see Matthews come out. But this is just gonna be health. This is gonna be letting guys rest, sitting guys out, take a breather, and then come back. And I I don't really care about that. I will ask you this because I think that this is like kind of gonna be a needle for people. Um, I talked about Samson off not being good and the chat kind of seemed to go really far in the one direction of like, we're fucked. <laughs> uh, I don't agree with that. Uh, I talked about the 700 tonight and yeah, that's not good. And it, you know, you probably win this game if he's just making one more save, but I think that it's only cause for concern. If in the next game, he's not good. If he doesn't bounce back in the next game, because you know what? You could probably grant him the 22-game stretch he went on where he was out of his mind or at least really good, and then you have one bad game. Are you panicking at all here about Sam uh, Samsonov? Should the chat be panicking? Uh, like, What's the thought process there? Is this showing us his true colors? What's going on with uh, Ilya Samsonov? No, I mean, I think you hit it right on the head there again, Zach. Um, uh, I mean, I'm not going to pretend to be a goalie guy. Uh, I, I see them. They wear their big pads. They they stop the puck sometimes. I don't know what they do. Sometimes. To be honest. Um, but, but uh, I mean, I, I, I tend to lean sort of the same thing we were saying before. Like, you, you, don't, have your, you don't have a top four defenseman in. Uh, your Leafs are, Leafs are locked into their spot. They're playing a team that's out of the playoff picture. Nobody's getting up for this game, and yeah. and if you're Samsonov, uh, I think exactly like you what, like what you said. You you give him you you, you kind of wipe the slate after this one. You keep it in the back of your head. Sammy wasn't good, and you look to the next game. You see if next game can he beat those one more save allegations. I think that's that's all that really matters at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, it's the next game after this one uh, because really. It's a nothing game. It's game seventy nine. You're playing. You're playing a bottom feeder team. That's really at the end of the day, they got a lot of firepower. I know there's no Jack Hughes over there, but there's some pretty good. There's some pretty good damn players over there. Uh, and and you got a Leafs team that's just uninspired. Nobody nobody's pushing that extra mile to to block a shot. Nobody's nobody's jumping in front of pucks with their teeth. Like uh, I don't I don't think that 
it, you can really take one thing or the other out of this game, whether it's forwards, defense, or goalies. Yeah, that's what like I got a text from my dad during the game after the uh, the one late Devils goal, and he's like, "I'll just read it because I was <laughs> ask what the hell." He said, "Nylander looked like he was trying to get out of the way of that shot." I'm like, "He probably was." <laughs> it's game seventy nine, and they don't like this is not what they care about. So like to your point, they're probably just kind of like, "Am I going to go that extra mile to block the shot?" If I'm a guy like Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, Nylander, Tavares, probably not. That's something you'll do when it comes to you know the games leading up to this, or when you're in that push, and when your your team's falling behind in games when it when it matters, or and then when you get to the playoffs, that's hopefully what you'll do. But like in a game like this you're probably feeling a little bit more um, like, let's just get out of here and let's just move on and not have to deal with this anymore. Uh, I got 50 likes here on the stream, so I got to do the smelling salts. Um, I know you're a Penguins fan. This friend of mine here, by the way, on the line, everybody, GMAC, uh, I know he's a Penguins fan. Are the Penguins making the playoffs? I know, I know this is a leave show, but I I got to ask you. I got to hear from you while I do these salts. Look, look, Zach. <laughs> I've tried to I've tried not to talk about the Pens all year <laughs> this year. Woo. Oh, these ones are really strong. <laughs> I've I've tried to stop talking about the Pens all year this year. There's been seven hundred times that I've been convinced that they're dead and buried. Uh, I I don't know what to think. I mean, you know me, I love Sid more than anybody in my life. I yeah. think I think he's single-handedly picked up that team and, and dragged them to where they need to be. Um, and I think you got some guys that are some really good players now that are starting to fire. Uh, I think really at the end of the day, the biggest difference has been that, that infusion of, of young players. They've got some energy in their lineup now. Uh, I think maybe that push from some of the young guys in the that are that have been getting some play in the bottom six that that lights a fire under everybody. Um, I think maybe that's even something that you could compare back to Leafs teams in previous years. They don't have guys with that fire in the bottom six that doesn't really like it doesn't light the fire under everybody. I think yeah. that's something that we're seeing out of the Pens right now, uh, which I love to see. Um, and I mean, at the end of the day, I, I got to see Eric Carlson do a double knee slide in overtime, like Yakupov into the corner that, that I'm going to bed happy today. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, all right, GMAC, I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to do this and call in here to the show tonight. You're welcome back anytime. And, um, don't go, uh, don't be too happy going to bed here tonight, if you know what I mean, watching watching that video over and over again. <laughs> oh, you know me, Zach. Well, hey, thanks <laughs> for having me. I appreciate it anytime. Best best voice uh, out here in Toronto out of everybody. Always appreciate it, brother. Thanks, GMAC. Appreciate that. There you go. Uh, hopping by to help break down the game here tonight. Uh, friend of the show, friend of mine. Graham McLean, GMAC, hopping in here to help break this one down. So thank you to him for doing so. Appreciate that as always. We'll keep breaking things down, but before we do, I mean, let, let's figure this out. Let's see if we can do this. Um, let's see if we can get, get this to work. I'm trying to operate this on the fly. I've got a video from our friend, Jay Rosehill, talking about Max Domi sticking up for Austin Matthews. Let's see if this works. Woohoo, Max Domi, what got into you? I'll tell you what got into him. He wanted to send a message that says, don't fucking touch him. Don't touch him. He's going to have 70 goals in a couple of days. You have your best chance of going deep that you've had in a long time, this Maple Leafs crew, and you've brought in personnel like Max Domi who can play with a little bit of chip on their shoulder, who understand it. And whether you didn't think that he does you know, should have gone in there on Nemec and, and did that. You're probably the same person who is laughing and saying the Leafs don't, the Leafs don't have pride in anything. They don't stand up for each other. The Leafs are a joke. They're soft. They don't have any team toughness. Now they pull that kind of thing. You're the same person who's going to say it both ways. And I'm telling you that there's going to be no more of that this year. There's been times in the past where teams come and they just come right after Matthews right after Marner, try to rough him up. 
and the team is standing around looking at their feet, doing nothing about it, looking at each other. Are you going to do something? Am I supposed to do something? What are we doing here? Now they have players that fly in there and say, over my dead body, are you going to come in here and even rough one of these guys up a little bit? We care too much. We have too much team toughness. We're a different outfit now. And it shows. And this has nothing to do with Ryan Reeves even. It doesn't have anything to do with these different players and personnel that can stay up. Some of the big D-men that have stepped up recently and been acquired that can do that job. A guy like Domi, he's he's the last guy who needs to do that You know, on paper. He's playing with Austin Matthews. He's racking up points. He's on the first line. But he gets it. And he's standing up for his boy and for his team. And this is a team that is different than the ones in the past. So if you say that he shouldn't have done that because he took a penalty or something and he's supposed to give a rip about a nothing game in the middle of April, you're off base. He doesn't care. Nobody cares. That's irrelevant. What matters and what they care about is what this team stands for What this year, how they go about their business, what they think about themselves internally, and what they're going to do this year in the playoffs. There you go. Words from Rosie. Appreciate that. That's cool. Being able to fire those videos up here uh, live. You can also check that one out if you want to watch it back after. You can obviously rewind and watch the show, but you can also head over to the Leafs Nation um, YouTube channel right here on this channel. You can find that video posted where Rosie's talking about that. And I think a couple of things he said are true is, one, it's kind of one thing we've been talking about here in the chat tonight about this game and people getting mad and upset about what happened is it's a nothing game, right? You're, you're trying to get out of here healthy. You're trying to get out of here closer to some milestones. You still want to stick up for each other. You still want to prove that you are this different team and all that stuff. But I think Rosie's bang on about that. It's it's just a nothing game. It's just trying to get through the regular season to what matters the most. Like, no one cares about what your record's going to be at the end of the year at this point. I'm not going to look back at this season and be like, wow, imagine we had we had we had one we had another win and that you know that Thursday against the Devils. Like it's not going to change anything for me going into the playoffs this year. It's not going to be something I look back at. Every year with this team now, unless it's going to become life or death of making playoffs and winning presidents trophies, then I don't care about some of these games. And then as far as Rosie's talking about with the team, I think that just shows a little bit of why it's different and why I just kind of have a little bit more belief. And you know what? Maybe I'm the idiot who's going to be proven wrong once we get to the playoffs and this team's just going to crumble. This team is going to absolutely fall apart and they're not going to be that good of a team anymore. And we're just going to see them, their true colors show and, and Matthews and Marner and Nylander and Tavares are going to disappear and they're not going to score goals and all that. But it just it makes me feel like this is a different team, a different group that we've got ahead of us here where things are just going to go in a different direction because it feels like these guys stick up for each other, they care. And I've had more fun watching this team, especially over like the last four months at least, you know, dating back to kind of early to mid January that than I've had in the last you know three four years even I, I, other than really Ma the year Matthews had 60 but like outside of that this has probably been the most fun hockey team this hasn't been this the past years I've looked at and been like oh that was cool to see that many points that was cool to see Matthew scored that many goals and there were all those cool moments and these little personal milestones this has been the most fun to watch this team because I feel like I'm watching the most complete hockey team that we've seen. This is the closest to a real hockey team. And it's felt a lot different and it's felt a lot better from that standpoint. Keep hitting that like button if you haven't already. Again, appreciate GMAC for calling in here tonight on the stream. Appreciate everyone who's participating in the chat there. Obviously, came on here, got a little bit heated with you guys. So I respect, I appreciate what you guys are sending. Going to continue to read everything and want you guys to be a part of the show. But I just didn't get why we were going so nuts there, like off the jump. Everyone came in here like, fuck this team. We're going to lose in the first round. Like, maybe, but I don't think it's as guaranteed as it was made to seem just based off of everything that happened. Let's, talk, let's, let's get out of here and wrap this up with a couple more things. 
I talked about it being a nothing game on a Thursday. We've got more important stuff coming up, guys. We've got we've got more important stuff coming up. Like heading on over to nationgear.ca to get yourself some exclusive Bleed Blue merch. Look, you want to be ready to go for game one of the playoffs. You want to be repping the team. You want to be repping your favorite team. Even if you're watching here right now and it's not the Leafs, but it's another team that we're carrying over on nationgear.ca, that's where you're going to want to go to get all of your playoff merch. You want to get everything you need to be ready for a long playoff run. You're going to want to get it over at nationgear.ca. Make sure... To head over to nationgear.ca if you want to get your exclusive bleed blue merch you can also click the link in the description of this video and uh shop now because look we're gonna be rocking it here we're gonna be rocking it on the uh, uh on on the show throughout the playoffs leading up to the playoffs you're gonna want some yourself you're gonna want to be involved let's just make it simple nationgear.ca i'll answer this question before i keep moving Moody, 1986. Zach, what's your second and third line look like? <clears throat> Easy for me. Um, I go first line, keep it the same. Second line, Marner, Tavares, McMahon. Third line, Nylander, Holmberg, Nyes. Enough of moving Nyes off that line. Enough of having Robertson. Um, enough of having Robertson in here. I get that he scores every time he comes back. Too bad that one was offside tonight, but like, I just don't think he may impacts the the rest of the game, the rest of the game that much. And you want to talk about a guy who like Domi could get pushed off the puck easily in the playoffs? That feels like it's gonna be him. Like it feels like he's just gonna be that non-impact player. So Marner, Tavares, McMahon, I go Nylander, Holmberg. Nice. I think he can get it done. Fourth line, don't really care. Noah Gregor, nope, can't play. I kind of like having Reeves in. I'm happy for him, but I'm happy to have like a rotation of guys going in and out, in and out, in and out. Next man up mentality. Couple more things here before we finish up the show tonight. Let's get to our bets. Look, <laughs> this bet could not have gone any more, any worse than it did. If anybody's going to be taking my money, though, I'm happy that it's Bet99. Um, you know, we're in a battle all season. We're going head-to-head -head with Bet99. They're saying, you know, try to take money from us. We had been taking money from us. Now we're giving it back at this point. But we're still going head-to-head -head with these guys, trying to take money. This one, it... This one, our friends at Bet99 sat there and watched the pregame preview, and they said, this idiot. Then they watched the game, and they said, we knew it. And now they're watching the post game show, sitting there at the Bet 99 office, laughing at me because this is maybe the worst goddamn bet I've ever given out in my entire life based on the result that happened. I thought the handicap was there. I thought the number was there. I thought it was good. And this thing went so far the other way, it was outrageous. Ilya Samsonov, over 24 and a half saves. Minus 110 was the bet. Could that have gone any worse? Like, let's be real. Could that have gone any worse here tonight? I don't think so. Ilya Samsonov made 14 saves. <laughs> 11 away from what I needed. He only faced 20 shots. This was the biggest quickest donation i could have ever made to bet 99 they saw they sat there and they watched that that post go out they saw my my bet 99 account make that bet and they sat there and just laughed and laughed and laughed and said this clown thinks this is gonna happen 519 fishing correct for worst thing that could have happened for the bet and the game it was terrible over 24 and a half saves might be one of the worst bets I've ever made. And I might just stay so far away from this. So far away from goalies moving forward. That was outrageous. I'm sorry to you guys in the chat. I'll try to be better on Saturday. Maybe we just bet like Matthews anytime goal and Matthews two plus. I don't know. But that can't happen again. That was pretty insane. Sorry. <laughs> sorry 
And shout out to our friends at Bet99. If you're going to be betting anywhere, if you're going to be making stupid bets like that one, stupid bets that are just giving money away, it should be at Bet99. You know why? Because it's your local Canadian sports book and online casino built by Canadians for Canadians. With top tier customer service, fast payouts, and smooth transactions, Bet99 should be your choice of sports book. You must be 19 plus. Please play responsibly. Available to persons in Ontario only. Make sure to check it out. Head on over to Bet99 if you want to make donations like I did here tonight. Bet99 is the place to do it because. I go to that book, I want to make some some stupid bet like this. The interface is nice, it's easy to operate, it's easy to find where I'm trying to go, it's easy to find the game that I'm looking for, the bet that I'm looking for, the prop that I'm looking for, it's just, it's easy to navigate, I got it on mobile, I got it on web, like it's, there's, it's all there, it's all there. Make sure to check out Bet99. Shout out to them. Thanks for sponsoring the show. I'm coming for vengeance on Saturday. Be aware. All right, let's get to our final things. Let's get to our play of the game. All right, play of the game. Um, let's go with goal number 67. 68 was great too. I'll give that an honorable mention, but 67 because that's Matthew. It, that's Domi knocking the puck down along the wall. It's Domi making a beautiful pass out to Matthews who slips in and gets open for whatever reason in kind of the slot area there, picks up that puck and just rifles it past Jake Allen. The guy can score any way that he wants. He is automatic right now. It's the most impressive thing I've ever seen on a hockey rink before in my life. That was his 50th even strength goal. And then he scored his 51st even strength goal. You want to put that into perspective? Zach Hyman has 53 goals this year, right? Austin Matthews has two less five-on-five goals. Two. (laughs) Five-on-five. With his 51st five-on-five goal, that was the most five-on-five goals in Maple Leafs history. The guy is a machine machine honorable mentions would be david camp goal because holy shit the hands that were displayed there were nuts the pass by doer to him was great the turn back stop on a dime able to tuck that one through jake allen great play by david camp that was pretty beautiful the second austin matthews goal you you enter the zone you cause some chaos a little bit puck comes back domi gets it tape to tape to Matthews through skates through sticks hits him on the stick stick and just taps right into the empty net easy as that walk out of there 68 thank you thanks for having me what a beautiful pass by Max Domi and obviously Matthews just to the right spot at the right time because he's that good of a goal scorer and another honorable mention Max Domi fight Max Domi fight beats the absolute breaks off Nemich that was pretty sick that's my plays of the game. Let's get out of here with our final thing. Let's get to our grade of the game. Answers. I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Grade of the game. Drop yours in the chat as well. I want to see where you guys are at. Um, I think I'm going to go C- minus on this. Like, here's the reality. Both special teams stunk. Your goaltender stunk. Stunk. Sorry. There was not much good going on here tonight with this team. 
uh, from a special teams perspective, from your like big player perspective, Matthews was great. Marner, okay. JT, nice to see him get a couple of goals. That pass by Morgan Riley to John Tavares in the slot was good. Like, it's not like those guys were bad. I ju- it just was like, okay, we're here. Like, we're getting through this. Nylander, kind of invisible again. Another night for him. No points. Five shots on goal. The only Leaf who had more shots on goal than Nylander here tonight was Tavares, who had six. You did generate 32 shots, and Jake Allen made 27 saves, so it's not like it was the best night for him on the other end either, but... Yeah. Um, Luke Fox tweeting here as well. Shot attempts are 14-1 to when Sheldon Keefe's second line of William Nylander, John Tavares, Mitch Marner were on the ice uh, tonight together. Yeah, that's good, but it's it's not something I think should be kept during as like a main thing i think it's something that you go to when you're trying to take over a game and like or have to come back a little bit of desperation oh man c minus is my grade that's gonna do it for me for tonight's show a reminder head over to nationgear.ca to check out um to check out all the gear that you're gonna need for the playoffs you're gonna want to get prepared for that you don't want to get in too late. You don't want to have it missed for game one, game two. You want to get it now so you're ready to go as soon as it starts. Like you want to be ready to go for the playoffs. Head over to nationgear.ca to get your gear, your exclusive bleed blue gear. Now, uh, on top of that, sign up at Bet99 Sportsbook. You must be 19 plus. Please play responsibly. Available to persons in Ontario only. That's where you should be betting if you're going to make stupid wagers like Ilya Samsonov over 24 and a half saves ridiculous but check it out ridiculous by me not them smart by them baited me in i thought great bet wrong idiot 14 saves thanks thanks samson off and on top of that you should be watching leafs morning take every monday through friday 11 a.m eastern time nick alberga j rose hill they're hopping on here breaking down games from the night before, taking a moment, you know, take some time to think about everything that went on so that you're not coming in here like a hothead like myself, freaking out about the game, losing it, losing it over the fact that I don't really care, but people are saying this is game over, the team stinks, it's done. They get a, they get, they get a breather, and you're going to want to check that out because it's not just them breaking things down, but it's guess. They're having a lot of people come in talking about things that are going on with the team, talking about things with the league. They're having, you know, Carter Hutton hop in there, Anthony Stewart hop in there, all these guys to give other perspectives and insight. Make sure to check out that show right here on the channel. Hit that like button, subscribe, turn on notifications. That's going to do it for me here tonight. I appreciate the support. I appreciate everyone tuning in. Thank you so much for watching the show. Really, really appreciate it. Let's keep things rocking as we get to the playoffs here. Uh, but that's going to do it for me here tonight. Leafs, this is being game number 79 of the Toronto Maple Leafs regular season. Leafs lose this one to the New Jersey Devils. 6-5. to five. Insane. 6-5, to five, moving to 46, 24, and 9 on the season. Thanks so much for tuning in. See you on Saturday. Keep going.